So, welcome everybody. We are not so many people here, but I hope for active discussion because it's uh, called round table. We are one round room and we want to discuss everything. I just want to give a, a very short historic overview about Debian Science. You see, uh, we had a mailing list in the beginning uh, and it, it evolved to something where people are really discussing and working in, in 2007 and uh, don't care about the names. I'm way too active in this list. Uh, these are the lists who, uh, people who are really working. Uh, Stefan and Sylvester. Sylvester is here. And there are other people who are working on Debian Science on more or less packages. Here's a, a list of the people discussing packaging issues. So we have some active crew since 2008 here and I really hope that these bars stay here uh, solid for every so we will not lose people and increase a little bit. Then there is um, another group um, called Packaging Sky Comp, which was by chance uh, more or less not, not really competing, but in parallel. But we, we try to make it uh, um, connect to Debian Science. And you see, we are working on this. People are now working in Debian Science, so the, to, to avoid confusion. The x axis is um, Wait. wrong. <laughs> Definitely wrong. It is, should be, I don't know why. This is 2011. But and the, the other ideas, I'm sorry. Take this as the x axis. I don't know why it's wrong. <laughs> this is a scientist. He has detected the fault. <laughs> so this is where these uh, people are discussing. So we try to, to avoid confusion inside Debian. Scientists should be connected in the Debian science team. So these are the uploaders, so what is really uploaded by Debian Science team. You see we have some increase and um, in my opinion this is uh, quite a good sign that Debian is featuring a lot of scientific packages and we want to make sure that every scientist uh, is well equipped with running Debian. And here in, in comparison the Debian SciComm team uploads which is a little bit decreasing and we, we think we join soon. So there is some interaction between uh, PKK Skycom, at, but it, I think it's nearly finished and it's a kind of friendly takeover, whatever. So <clears throat> we want to do um, in Debian Science, um, or do you want, want to continue or want me to? I can chat about this one. Yeah, okay. uh, so what we would like to do now uh, is to highlight that Debian has a lot of scientific packages. So it is something that we haven't been very good at. I have many people who are coming to see me on a daily basis and asking me, so what do you think about scientific Linux? And so they've got a very good uh, visibility over the internet and the Linux world because everybody thinks that scientific Linux is shipping a lot of scientific packages, which is not the case. Basically, CentOS plus MPI and a few others. While in Debian, we have plenty of scientific packages. So one thing that I would like to work, uh, to work during the next few months before the next DebConf is basically uh, do some advertising to show that we have plenty of scientific packages, that we have plenty of application and so on. So uh, this is one of the things I would like to discuss today, how we can make this happen and so on. So maybe create a website and uh, highlight that uh, more stronger use of uh, Debian blends and so on. So it is. And uh, in this field also, we would like to talk about two things. Basically, uh, make sure that the Debian blend list of scientific packages is up to date, because for now it's not the case. So you can find many scientific packages in the archive which are not referenced on, the, on blend. And the other way around is to use blend as a, a list of what we should package next. Because we have been packaging a lot of software and we would like, I'm sure there are plenty to package, so which one we should have in the archive which are really necessary on a daily basis for scientists. Um, now we have, I, I take this one. Um, we have prepared um, um, list from, from last year's Debian Science Workshop uh, with uh, open topics. I just 
I was not, not I did not join the, the, uh, this workshop because I uh, was in, uh, not in New York, but I created this wiki page, which is listing basically five topics. And m my suggestion would be we keep on talking these open topics. And if you have no better suggestion, we start with the first one, which is um, about the BibTech files. Um, there are three options discussed, or there were three options discussed. Uh, we want to, to keep the references for certain uh, scientific programs, and these uh, references are currently spread over, in part, the copyright file, what I think is wrong, because it's, it's not copyright information. Then we have some um, BIP files in Debian BIP, which are uh, strictly BIP tech files, uh, with, with, which has some advantage because you can cite them quite easily. And we have uh, the Debian upstream metadata YAML approach, which was uh, started by Charles Plessy. And um, the idea is to collect every data, every metadata of a package in one file, have it in, in a common format, and have the upstream or the, the um, reference information inside this format. And you could easily draw a script, a script on it to put it into um, a BibTeX file or something else. So this, I think this is the first topic we can discuss. What is your opinion of, uh, of you? Where should we put those references? It was just to ask, uh, I, I may have missed the point, but uh, what's the problem or the, the, what's, what do we want to do with BibTech files? Okay, the problem is you have um, some scientific software which is written by scientists and he has um, published a, a paper basic on this software. And it, it should be documented to uh, get it quoted and it uh, sh uh, would even make the the author of this software more happy about Debian because he gets some some extra reward. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. But we should agree on, on on a common format to to make it usable. So, any opinions? So, uh, I guess I don't really have strong opinions about what. First of all, I think the initiative is a good idea. I think probably nobody really thinks it's a stupid initiative, but. I don't also. Um, as far as the format, uh, it seems like uh, at least for me, BibTech is the sort of least common denominator format. And, and if we want to use something else, then there have to be some advantages to that. So I don't know, somebody here has talked with Charles or has followed this and can relate. The, the advantage of the upstream metadata uh, YAML is, um, in my opinion, uh, the first one, it is um, propagated to UDD, so we have any, every meta information in the um, universal, metadata, uh, universal Debian database. And um, I am using this, this the data for out of UDD to build the task pages, and so we can propagate this reference information very, very easily to the task pages. So it is a good idea to have it there. It is not so good if you want to be, do some uh, citation sprites, f f f if you put it into BibTeX input, and um, there would be some script needed to, to just convert it. I don't, I don't know either of the formats, but um, you're, you're emphasizing the upstream metadata as it can do something else. It sounds to me like, well, couldn't, isn't it a simple question of, of making a filter for the BIP data, or is it a complex format to extract from? Because I, I understand that YAML is, is the very generic one, like, like similar to JSON, in, 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 but, but oh, okay, uh, older than that and stuff. So, but the BIP format, which is specific to these uh, references that we need, So it's not a great format, but it's certainly parsable. We have several parsers in the archive, and uh, it's 
It is popular among scientists and scholars of, of, and students of various kinds, yes. Um, so it's a natural, it's a, I would say it has the advantage that it's human authorable, whereas in my opinion, Nyamu is not really human author authorable for most humans. It is about exact this topic, then, then I, I keep on answering this one, because we, we use the text in BibTeX format as a field names in, in YAML. So it's a one-to-one -one relation. So that is not more complex. Um, I'm actually wondering what exact kind of information you want to put in there. For example, if uh, there's an R implementation using a specific algorithm, having a paper listed there which explains the algorithm or is it uh, some paper actually, for example, using the software? Well, for, uh, currently we use it for a, a published paper, how the algorithm, is, algorithm works, but I think there is no restriction. If you, if there is a publication which is, which is somehow connected to the software. It makes sense to uh, put it there. So if I understand it correctly, it's usually information which is somewhere in the documentation, just not uh, centralized and maybe not in the correct or in one format. Because if somebody actually publishes a paper, I guess it is somewhere in the README or uh, any other documentation. No, it's about um, some remote document, uh, some remote paper which is not inside, not necessarily inside the package. It is just published on NCBI or wherever, and not It could even be that it's uh, the, the content of this paper is only accessible for uh, for people who subscribe some something. Okay. Um, are you interested or are you pushing for um, this BIP format being out, uh, used outside of the Debian Science project? In some context, it would probably make sense to um, cite things in other packages which are not part of the Debian Science project because they use an interesting algorithm or so something. And I think nobody else is aware of this. At least I didn't hear of it any time. Well, nobody is forbidden to use this, uh, this format um, in its packaging. Do, you don't have to be a member of Debian Science or uh, do, uh, you need to know this Debian Science project. It's just an effort. If there are any references which are relevant, then it makes sense to have a common format and anybody can use it. Instead of using just another uh metadata format, why not we use something like RDF uh, to describe um, the different kind of packages? Hmm? R RDF. Uh, I, was, I was mentioning why well, we don't want to use a metadata format that it's already known and specified out there like RDF to collect information about different um, resources that uh, uh, we use in... Actually, I know Who knows RDF? Please raise your hand. Who knows RDF format? So, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. We, 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 just, we, we just could add this. Well, um, in, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then in, in this case, I would really, really vote to use upstream metadata YAML and use a converter to either BibTech or R RDF. Yeah, this, no, this format is generic for any uh, metadata of a package, not only for references. And we, yeah, yeah, I will, I will hand over. And I think we, if we have a, um, a generic format which, is, which works also for references, and then we convert it, it might be more flexible. Sounds lovely. Who what, what is, how is the upstream metadata format governed or who is uh, designing the structures for, so that it's reliable, that there's, it's uniform how to convert from this format to the resource description framework, which is aiming at being a universal format to describing the whole world? 
Oh, there is. A, I'm not really sure if there is a DEP about this upstream metadata YAML, but at least there is a wiki page. We should check it, and we try, or Charles tries, and I, I think it's a good idea um, to to make use this Debian byte so that that you have like you have a Debian rules file, you have a Debian copyright file, you have this Debian upstream metadata YAML file. This is the idea. To to not overload, for instance, the copy uh, the, the, the 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 control file. Just to clarify, I'm not against. Uh, um, I'm 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 questioning it because uh, there has been a process for the copyright file. It has taken some years, and we have figured out uh, what is sensible there, based on a lot of it was actually trying to 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 seed out things that already was written in policy but just trying to make it machine readable. That was not a process to what should be in there and how it was a very tiny piece of it. This, to me, sounds like the Joker file of the Debian. So I'm curious about, is there already a process similar to the one for copyright files for Deb5 to, 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 to handle this, to me, yeah, Joker yeah. file? Yeah. And, and, and my answer is, I'm not really sure if there is a DEP process. I'm, I'm not sure. I know there's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's, it, there is a wiki page. You can go to debian, uh, wiki.debian.org, uh, upstream metadata YAML, and there is a description what should be in and what, what's the intention of it. So, and there are, in, in the Debian Mail team, we have 30 or 40 of them for those packages which, which I have. Which, what which basically the references, the, the home page, the, the author's name is, is uh, it's a little bit duplicated, um, but. Um, yeah, it's basically the content where I it, uh, I'm using it. There are other suggestions on, on the wiki page. I do not remember by heart. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, did somebody notes on this copy? We, we, we don't I, will show, I will show the, the copy thing. We have this, this uh, on Debian, uh, copy.debian.net this file where you can include and perhaps make some notes to, to make it easier afterwards to remember what we discussed. So, we have not really consensus, but uh, do we want to... Oh, there's a content, yeah. Yeah, we can agree that Debian slash copyright is not the right place for references. I think this this is uh, sure. everybody agrees. We can also agree that there will be huge amounts of screaming if we try and add more fields to Debian slash control. Yes. Even though, in some sense, it belongs the references belong there as much as home pages do. In a sense, home pages are upstream metadata, right? Yeah. They, they should be, in some sense, in the same place as, as references. But okay, so there's two things we can <laughs> agree. Yeah. You, you get a lot of friends in the, the uh, embedded devices uh, corner, which uh, get want to get rid of the home pages and, and, and overload of, of this information. But actually, we found reference information in the long descriptions of Debian control file, and we want to get rid of this because it's not uh, formatted and you, you cannot get it and it, it belongs also not there. So. Uh, um, frankly, uh, I don't see uh, any uh, strong case for anything but BibTech. Uh, uh, if it's convertible to BibTech, uh, in theory it's the same, but in practice uh, it's more difficult uh, for users that I presume uh, will overwhelmingly uh, use LaTeX. So my idea would, would be to have um, some time of a uh, postscript file, which could be uh, used by DH, I, I just uh, guessing DH science install or whatever. And if it finds uh, upstream metadata YAML, it converts the, the reference context to user share, science, bib text, whatever we, we define. And then you do get it and you have it. And RDF, if it makes sense and it is used by any, any program. I, I think this is, might be sensible. Okay? So. Uh, all I care about is that the user finds uh, BibTech. 
That's really important. So we, we want to make the user find all references on a common place. This is, should be the goal. <laughs> okay. So we want to... Consensus on that too. <laughs> what, what one? Ah, yeah, this is a, this is a, uh, yeah, it's definitely my uh, topic. Um, I was always um, thinking about what we c can we make uh, Debian science uh, more more visible, uh, or even I learned that we have a lot of physicists or a lot of mathematicians. Shouldn't they try to make their task a little bit more fine grained? to make um, um, the, the, the initial idea of Debian science was we have a large umbrella for all scientists because there is not enough manpower behind those specific topics. I would really like to see some kind of leaders of those sub-projects because I, see, I think Debian is, is working quite good. They not, did not really adopt this, this blendish idea and but they accepted that I did it for them. And we have Debian GIS, which does the geographical information systems. Debian biology is more or less covered by uh, Debian Med. And so I would love to see some people who care for, for other sciences in a more specific way. Even if I do not want to, to get rid of Debian science, but, but I think we, it could grow some children now. What do you think about this? Is there anybody who likes to run a specific plant? I'm not so sure that the team is so big and active and uh, that it makes sense to split. I mean, uh, I don't know if it, how that would work from a logistical point of view, but my feeling is that the Damien Science team maybe hasn't even reached critical mass in terms of... Uh, for example, uh, it's a much different setting, but uh, what I'm doing as I sit here and not take notes is working on some package Perl stuff. And if I compare the ability to bring new packagers in and mentor them and get them to become Debian developers, which I think is part of what we want to do, I think we're not there yet. So I, I mean, I'm not opposed to marketing ideas, but I think we should also think about keeping some un unity and critical mass in the team. Yeah, it's definitely a question of critical mass. Um, I, but my experience was, um, I, I was starting Debian Mate when I was quite alone and it uh, took about three years until I got uh, two or three more. But now we have, I think because the Debian Mate team existed, we had about eight to ten more developers than, than with, without this. So it, it is, yeah, I, I, I don't think it's dangerous. If, you, if there is somebody who would announce and it doesn't fly, we doesn't lose so much. So, but we, we, we can, in principle, we can only win if somebody spends a little bit of time. It's my opinion. I cannot force anybody. So, but we, if nobody else uh, so rises and says, "Well, I want to do it," then we could go to the next topic. Yeah, this is also it's probably probably the same like references. Yeah, and this is also one topic which was. Um, brought up in the, the biology world, we have three uh, Debian developers in a very uh, large uh, medical institute in, in Great Britain and they don't use Debian made and I asked them why. And they answered, um, well, the, the problem is every single user wants to pin on a very specific versions because he can only with this version reproduce his scientific results. I admit I don't really like this attempt because either the, the data are broken or the programs are broken if you can't reduce, uh, reproduce it. But if the user wants the system as it is, 
um, what should we do? Do you have any idea? Uh, we, yeah, snapshots. So it says there. I mean, that's only the only sensible thing I can see for people to use. Grab the, your packages from there. Not install everything from there, but grab those specific packages from there. We we can we can we can help our art users like that. But I don't th I don't see the sensibility of Debian serving the purpose of of, of maintaining broken things of art. Uh, uh, Odd versions like that. It's, 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 it's not designed to be an historical archive of working with the, the past of, of the individual packages. Okay, uh, well, uh, I wanted to, d uh, to say uh, we have APT pinning uh, if they want to keep to a specific version. Uh, and uh, so uh, he was saying uh, this needs it uh, to be uh, uploaded uh, at least once uh, to Debian. Well, if they use uh, Debian Science, then they won't use a version that, uh, that we have skipped. So I don't see that as a big problem. Uh, but we can also try to um, upload um, every upstream v v v version. Uh, it's not not useful, uh, but yeah, um, uh, teach them uh, APT pinning. Yeah, no. What I meant is basically, uh, if a user wants a specific version which never been into the archive, he cannot switch to this one. And I do not agree all the time that uh, it means the software is broken. For example, with Fortran compiler, doing if you switch from a version to another, you can get some different result because of the compiler. So it's not uh, only a problem of the final software. It's a whole chain. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and on the other hand, I mean, uh, for, for people packaging these, these, uh, these things, if anyone is interested in, in experiences in, in maintaining multiple branches of things, <laughs> but but no, don't laugh. I mean, seriously, if no, if, no, no, no. if anyone is interested in, in this, and I, I have a little bit of experience in in, in doing it with the sugar, uh, the sugar packaging is maintained for too many versions at the moment. Yeah, it's not cleaned up, but but I have done that for for a couple of years. So it's not that hard if upstream is li alive with as maintaining these, is treating them as still alive branches. Uh, I was thinking that they were not. I was assuming it was uh, upstream is moving on. Then, no, then it's another I, problem. I, I was not laughing uh, since this was a bad idea. It is just that it's a huge work when you have when you are maintaining tons of package and if you have to maintain a few different versions, it is a lot of work. But I understand the point, and uh, I already know some people who are doing that on the ba daily basis. But uh, it's still a lot of work, and it's not rewarding as a as a packager to do that. So, um monopolizing the mic a bit but uh, so two points one just a kind of snarky remark which is that expecting the same results from floating point computations is nonsense mm. but there's nothing we as Debian can do about that misconception um, but the l less snarky remark is uh, it sounds a bit okay so versions that have never been in the archive are one thing but uh, in some sense, you need to think about forward ports of old versions to newer desktops. Of course, the same scientist who wants this exact version of the Fortran compiler wants to re run Ice Weasel 5.0 so he can use Google Plus. Uh, so, uh, sorry. So, uh, this is, I think, a new concept within Debian, and I'm not sure if it's worth supporting, but it's a uh, it's a it would be a service to the community, I suppose, if the demand is there. Well, uh, the, uh, there are also uh, different kinds of uh, different versions. Uh, the, uh, uh, there are small um, uh, uh, incremental uh, bug fixes that pro probably uh, we shouldn't um, bother about uh, um, actively uh, maintaining. Uh, uh, and there are uh, major releases. Uh, so, uh, uh, and in that, uh, uh, I think I think we should uh, we should we should strive to make major releases uh, 
are coinstallable, uh, for example. Uh, to, um, so uh, I'm thinking uh, of um, the way I packaged uh, Isabel. I didn't upload it to Debian because of uh, because, uh, uh, because of stream uh, didn't want me to, but that's not an issue. Uh, um, uh, everything was uh, in uh, directories with a major version name um, in it, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so that different incompatible major versions would be uh, would be uh, co-installable. Uh, and then we don't even need snapshot. We don't even need really pinning. Uh, it's just uh, uh, the, uh, the different packages in the archive. When it makes sense. I think one solution to this would be uh, producing static packages by some manner or being able to do that uh, without problems because um, if you have an installation, use it and then upgrade, 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 usually the old version works on. But the problem is if you have a new install, want a specific version from like two years ago, you have a pain in the ass getting the actual libraries. So producing a stable, uh, a static version of that version actually wanted would be a solution, I guess. But not a really nice one. We are really opening a can of worms here. <laughs> You do not want the static version if it's linked against libpng, which is the later on have security fixes. On the other hand, when you are saying that you want something static, is it really at the application or is it the underlying libraries that you wanted to fixate? You didn't know, but you just realized that it worked with the old environment, okay? So saying that you want the old environment of this, but you want the new environment of, of another part of your system is just the can of worms. So there's, there's, there's several suggestions for this. And I'm pretty sure if we, if we follow any of them, then we will learn both how few users are really using this because they will, they will not trust us because there will be fewer eyeballs on these speciality things. And, and, and on the other hand, we also learn if it was the library they really wanted or it was the old version, of, of the, if it was a forward port or if it was, there's, there's many ways to go and it's, we're getting fewer and fewer users. So I don't, I, I think it, uh, generally, I mean, the, the maintainers of each specific package might, might, might learn or might know better, feel better if, it, if it's relevant. I, I tried out with Sugar, which is not a, Debian uh, science package, but I tried with Sugar because it seemed as if there was a large community from, from a version that was the, that the upstream was deriving from, but they still wanted to maintain. All of South America was still using the old branch. Okay, uh, and then later on I learned that the next branches was not really used. So it turns out that I need, may, may not need to shut them down and still maintain the old ones. That's specific to this one package, making full think, thinking in full infrastructures for Debian for this thing. I don't, I don't see that as, as sensible. It's, it's becoming too narrow. So finally, I think even if we would find a way to support this, but I'm not sure we, we find uh, only very few users and it's probably not worth the effort, all this stuff. Um, what about we teach people how to use virtual machines? I, I mean, with KVM and um, I mean, so many machines are capable of running virtual machines really well now and you should have a virtual machine that you run your experiments on and make a backup of that virtual machine and when you want to run it again, pull it out of the cupboard and boot the virtual machine. I, I think that's... Yeah, probably it is a good idea. Did somebody note this on the document? Please, anybody, put, put note on the, the copy. Thank you. So the idea of last year, it was to add more tags to the package that we've got. So uh, I'm not very familiar with this part into Debian, so I don't know if... Uh, some people want to explain more how we could uh, do that in the archive, the package we've got. 
and if people are interested or not. Okay, we can skip this one. Well, maybe. Uh, it does everybody know Deptex? 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 Okay. So I should ex explain what Deptex are. So this is a, uh, Enrico Zini will speak here. He's the inventor of Deptex to make some. Uh, yeah, to, ten minutes left um, to make <laughs> to make it uh, easy to to find. Um, uh, packages in Debian, for, for instance, you, you can ask Steptex, uh, give me all packages which are, uh, have a graphical interface and doing um, image processing, for instance. A, a scope, yes, it's at the scope. And I would really love if everybody would go to deptex.debian.net and have a look because it, it, it makes quite some sense to have all the scientific packages uh, tagged for, for uh, in, pr in principle it is a quite a duplication of work what we have done in the, the tasks. It is, it is a competing concept but the concept is so less known because you have to trust the users to invert it. The tasks we can do it manually ourselves and that's why they are there and the depth tax is, is much more flexible but um, it, it, it depends a bit on the people to, to work together, which, which obviously not happens if, if not even 50% in the, the, the room know about this concept. Um, ich, I would really like to, to, to that we, we discuss on the mailing list later what text makes sense for scientific, scientific software and that we enforce people to go there and to, to do the tagging. Alternative approach that those few that is interested in this and see this as being super cool, I'm one of them, um, maybe subvert the, uh, <laughs> the, this other uh, approach and uh, make it use the depth tax mechanism. Yeah. Uh, because no, it's not needed that you rely on the users. You can run your own repository of depth tax. So. I, we, we could, I would perfectly agree that we could probably create our task files from the depth text database. It would probably work and then we could work on this approach. Because what about making what about making tags from the task files? Is is that a sensible concept? It might work if if if, if these the tags and the tasks match and uh, for for um, and signed, they don't match because we have not fine-grained tasks. In uh, Debian Mid, we have fine-grained enough tasks. Um, I think that uh, the, 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 I think the, uh, the um, tags will always be um, um, uh, more detailed uh, than the tasks. So uh, I would go the other way around, maybe, uh, because tags contain implementation language and uh, uh, whether it's a graphical UI uh, or not, which I don't see as encoding in, in tasks. No? <laughs> you, you want? Do you want? <laughs> I see depth tags as more generic than... Uh, as more generic. There's more... Uh, more uses, multi-purpose than than the other. So, but let's not get into details of that now. I think. In, in principle, I agree with Jonas about this. But I, I think if we, we should proceed now, and we, we have only five minutes left. If there is any topic left, yeah. So we we had a discussion on Debian Science uh, a few weeks ago. So the idea was at first that we have two main things: we have Debian Science and Debian Maintainer. And the first idea was to use Debian Science for users and Debian Science Maintainer for packagers. So about 20 people say yeah, it should be a good idea. And at some point, Adam Powell came with the, with the argument that. Uh, people who are users they usually go on the mailing list of the software they are using and not on Debian. So uh, at some point he said, okay, he's right, so maybe we should say, okay, the way we are using it now is fine, or maybe we should say, okay, Debian Science should be for users and not for packaging question. 
But I think because of the package in question, users are leaving the mailing list. So we have more geeks on the mailing list than users, and maybe we want to get more feedback from the real users of the software. So it's a tricky question for me. <laughs> user-oriented question, so it's not very interesting for us. I don't have any data, because <laughs> you have to check on the, mailing, on the mailing list who is subscribed, and you don't know exactly who it is, and you don't know if they are, they are a level of, uh, or they are skilled in computer science. And, no, no, it, uh, it was just a, a test, so maybe at some point we can make user of Debian Science talk about software and using the software and not about packaging them. It's not that I don't care about the users, it's that it's, it's so tricky to figure out what is the best way to serve the users by being at one point so there's no ambiguity about where are the cool people, the people really yeah. knowing th stuff, or is it better to split it up so you don't scare them off by being too cool and asking about way advanced stuff that you don't, uh, are not interested in. And the only real way to figure it out, as I see it, is to look into the future. Uh, yeah. What happened if we did this? What happened if we did that? I don't have the, the ability to jump between uh, these multiple realities or something. Uh. Yeah, I, I finally think we, we cannot force you though to discuss this topic there and this of topic course. there. Mm -hmm. so. well, it was just to try, try to create a community into Debian and not outside. It was the idea. I believe you. <laughs> You can, you can keep it. <laughs> okay. To make a concrete suggestion of mine, I believe in, in, in staying at the same place to, to keep a critical, because of the issue of critical mass again. Uh, but I don't know specifically for Debian Science if you have already have the two critical mass, if you are scaring people off, that if that's the issue here. Uh, as a, if if I was not a packager, I think I would be scared of asking questions on the mailing list where I see very technical questions happening all the time. And it's why I think most of the normal users are not using the mailing list to ask some question like, I want to do this kind of computation, which library should I use? Because on the mailing list, most of the questions are very technical. But, but so, but I'm just thinking that wouldn't you still have the technical questions on the mailing list? Would you then t tell people to not be too smart in their way of asking questions because you want to invite more fact, simple I'm, users? I'm afraid to mix the two things, the user question and the packaging question, and it was the idea why I wanted to split them. For what it can worth on IRC, there has been quite some consensus on the fact that splitting mailing lists for users and for packagers is better than not. And they're suggesting that uh, in package multimedia, they've done so, and apparently they uh, had good results. Okay. Just to um, Thank you, you for know. the feedback. Who was giving the feedback? Who uh, made the judgment? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. And Stuart <laughs> Prescott. Stuart Prescott and somebody else. Okay. Thanks, Stuart. <laughs> okay. Greetings to the people outside. Yeah. <laughs> so here is some URL, so if you want to have a look into the policy and uh, what we are trying to do to figure out and so on. So you will find everything. Enrico, can you imagine half of the people don't know debt tax in this room? I think we have finished anyway. Also, we can give a five-minute short introduction to DebTex now. Yeah. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> if you like. And? <laughs> here's a mic. Okay, I'll leave this here. <laughs> so, hi. Uh, what were we talking about? Uh, Debian Science Roundtable. Oh, okay. Uh, hi. Uh, Debtex is categories for packages. And because um, um, uh, normally, with, I mean, uh, without Debtex, you only have sections, uh, which uh, in your case, you have one section, science. And that's not much. Uh, and tasks, but they're not. 
quite, they're not package information as such. They're more like to install groups of packages. Whereas, um, uh, DevTech is allowed to have more than one uh, name per package, and uh, uh, they are all, and we have like more than 600 different categories available, uh, and they're grouped by what we call facets. Uh, a facet is a point of view from which you look at the archive. So we have one facet, which is uh, what's the role of the software in the archive, and so it can be a program, a library, documentation, a plugin, and so on. And we have another one that's what's the interface of the package, and so X11, a uh, command line, and so on. Um, and then it, we can, it, can, it gets even more specific. So there's a package for the field of science or research or, well, field of knowledge. And so it could be medicine, um, physics, or uh, literature, history, and so on. And then uh, we even experimented making field-specific facets. Like we have an experimental facet called biology, which has tags that I do not remember because I'm not a biologist. Um, and uh, so that uh, specific groups of users can have uh, can find words belonging to their field in the classification. Um, I think that's about the, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it sorry? Is it simple or can it be made simple? Uh, okay, for user, for um, people who are working in certain areas, to add more uh, more specific uh, uh, classification faucet for that area. For example, for software in maths. Okay, you say it, some were added, but maybe uh, users can have the need to to add. Add some more, some more specific. Uh, is could it, this made possible? Um, yes. In order to add uh, a new uh, tag, you um, join the Deb in Devel uh, the Deb tags Devel mailing list, which is not much about developments, about everything Deb tags. But you can't change the name of a list after you made it, um, and uh, propose a new tag. It's as simple as that. If it fits in a new facet, sorry, if it, if it fits in an existing facet. The only requirement is that there are at least seven packages in the archive that would have it. There's no point in having yeah. one tag for two packages. It's not representative of Debian, of anything in Debian. Uh, if you want a new facet, there may be a bit more discussion, like we'll see if it makes sense, if it overlaps with existing facets. Um, but ideas are absolutely welcome. Um, a facet should be sort of uniform. Um, it, should, it is a point of view from which you look at the archive. It's, it's something that should conceptually make sense as an idea. And it's not like you can't take the existing sections in Debian and make a facet section. It wouldn't have much sense. It would kind of overlap with other things. There's not much point in doing that. But if it's something uniform, we try to think in the field of uh, research to have one about research work. So something for uh, doing research, for publishing research, for bibliography. Um, so kind of the work, uh, to, to have a facet to represent the workflow of academic work. Um, yeah, we had ideas like that, and why not? Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. <laughs>